हेलो एवरीवन आई एम ओम कृष्ण गुप्ता आई एम असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इन इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स एंड कम्युनिकेशन इंजीनियरिंग डिपार्टमेंट इन अजय कुमार गर्ग इंजीनियरिंग कॉलेज गाजियाबाद इन दिस क्लास आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट 741 फोर वन आई सी ऑफ द सब्जेक्ट इंटीग्रेटेड सर्किट्स सो इन दिस क्लास आई विल डिस्कस अबाउट द बेसिक्स ऑफ ऑपरेशनल एम्पलीफायर आफ्टर दैट वन ऑफ द मोस्ट पॉपुलर ऑफ एम आई सी दैट इज सेवन फोर वन आई सी आई विल डिस्क्राइब आई विल गिव द डिस्क्रिप्शन ऑफ सेवन फोर वन आई सी कंटेंट्स आर बेसिक्स ऑफ ऑप एम आइडियल ऑप एम कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स एंड सेवन फोर वन आई सी सो स्टार्टिंग विद द ऑपरेशनल एम्पलीफायर सो एज द नेम सजेस्ट ऑपरेशनल बेसिकली वेन ऑपरेशनल एम्पलीफायर वॉज इन्वेंटेड इट वॉज यूज टू परफॉर्म डिफरेंट ऑपरेशन मैथमेटिकल ऑपरेशन फॉर एग्जाम्पल एडिशन सब्ट्रैक्शन इंटीग्रेशन डिफ्रेंसिएशन लॉग एंटी लॉग दैट्स वाई इट इज कॉल्ड ऑपरेशनल एम्पलीफायर सो ऑपरेशनल एम्पलीफायर इज द एम्पलीफायर विच इज यूज टू परफॉर्म डिफरेंट ऑपरेशन फॉर एग्जाम्पल एडिशन सब्ट्रैक्शन इंटीग्रेशन डिफ्रेंसिएशन लॉग एंटी लॉग एट्सेट्रा बट द एप्लीकेशन ऑफ द ऑपरेशनल एम्पलीफायर इज नॉट लिमिटेड टू ओनली दीज सर्किट्स वी कैन यूज ऑपरेशनल एम्पलीफायर टू डिजाइन ऑसलेटर्स टू डिजाइन एक्टिव फिल्टर्स टू डिजाइन एनालॉग टू डिजिटल कन्वर्टर्स डिजिटल टू एनालॉग कन्वर्टर्स एट्सेट्रा सो देर आर वेरियस एप्लीकेशन ऑफ ऑपरेशनल एम्पलीफायर बेसिकली ऑपरेशनल एम्पलीफायर इट इज अ डायरेक्ट कपल्ड हाई गेन एम्पलीफायर डायरेक्ट कपल्ड हाई गेन एम्पलीफायर इट इज कॉल्ड डायरेक्ट कपल्ड the reason is that uh, in operational amplifier uh, different stages are cascaded right and uh, there there is no use of uh, coupling capacitors like we do in uh, discrete circuits that's why it is called direct coupled because the output of the first stage it is uh, direct connected to directly coupled to the input of the second stage and the operational amplifier it offers high gain the reason is that uh, normally a uh, an operational amplifier is a multi stage amplifier right so multi stage amplifier means it may be two stage three stage four stage five stage amplifier so if uh, multiple stages are connected in uh, cascade then obviously the gain the voltage gain of the amplifier will be high so it offers high gain because it is a multi stage amplifier and the schematic symbol of uh, operational amplifier is this one it is having two input terminals one is inverting input terminal this negative one is inverting input terminal and uh, this positive one is non inverting input terminal output is let's say it is v0 let's say v1 voltage is applied at the non inverting terminal and v2 voltage is applied at the inverting terminal and uh, normally op op m requires uh, dual supply especially 741 ic it requires dual supply plus vcc and minus vcc plus vcc and minus vcc so you can see that uh, this op m this is the symbol of op m and it is uh, right now in open loop configuration so the gain of this op m will be called open loop gain let's say uh, it is aol and uh, the open loop gain it uh, is equal to the output voltage v not upon uh, the input differential voltage input differential voltage that is v1 minus v2 since op m is a difference amplifier it amplifies the difference between two input signals so this is the open loop gain of this op m so on the basis of uh, uh, the input signal applied to to a particular input terminal there are two configurations in operational amplifier one is inverting configuration inverting amplifier and another one is non inverting amplifier so in inverting amplifier uh, we apply the input signal at the inverting input terminal in the non inverting amplifier we apply the input signal at the non inverting terminal there are various applications of inverting amplifier as well as non inverting amplifier uh, for example one of the application of uh, inverting amplifier using op amp is a summer circuit adder circuit right we can add uh, uh, two voltages three voltages and number of voltages we can add uh, 
by using opm in inverting configuration and one of the application of uh, non inverting uh, configuration is uh, voltage buffer we can design voltage follower circuit uh, using non inverting configuration of opm so as far as uh, the mode of operation is concerned the opm it can be used in open loop configuration and opm can be used in closed loop configuration open loop means there is no feedback there is no feedback so if we are using operational amplifier in open loop configuration it means that there is no feedback in this case the output of the opm is saturated the reason is that the voltage gain the open loop voltage gain of ideal opm is infinite but uh, for practical opm also it is very high so as far as 741 ic is concerned for 741 ic the open loop gain is 107.7 db approximately 107 db that is more than 100 db so the gain is very high that's why if we use opm in open loop configuration since the open loop gain is very high so the output of the opm get saturated saturated means let's say if v1 voltage is applied at the non inverting terminal v2 voltage is applied at the inverting terminal output voltage is v0 and the supply voltage is plus minus vcc so you can see that here there is no feedback right so in this case the output of the opm will go either at plus v set or minus v set right that that v set will be uh, maximum equal to the supply voltage the output of the opm it cannot cross it can never cross the supply voltage but it will uh, approximately equal to supply voltage or lesser than supply voltage right in that case we say that the output of the opm is saturated so the output will be at uh, either at plus v set or the output will be either at minus v set the output of the opm will be at plus v set if the voltage at the non inverting terminal is greater than the inverting terminal means v1 is greater than v2 and the output of the opm will be at minus v set if the voltage at the inverting terminal inverting input terminal is greater than non inverting terminal so if we use opm in open loop configuration then the output of the opm will have only two values it will be at either plus v set or it, it will be at either minus v set so whether it will be at plus v set or minus v set it totally depends upon upon the voltage at the input terminal means which uh, input terminal voltage is greater that's why uh, the open loop configuration of opm it has very limited applications because in open loop the output of the opm gets saturated so it has very limited application one of the uh, application of opm in open loop configuration is voltage comparator circuit right another configuration is closed loop configuration closed loop configuration means if there is a feedback path if there is a feedback it means that it's a closed loop so the feedback may be negative feedback may be positive feedback in analog circuits uh, you had studied about negative feedback and uh, positive feedback like negative feedback it is used in amplifiers positive feedback is used in oscillators so in closed loop configuration opm can be used in negative feedback configuration opm can be used in positive feedback configuration there are various applications uh, based on this like uh, the negative feedback uh, uh, con the negative feedback applications are amplifier and the positive feedback applications are oscillators so we can design amplifiers uh, oscillators using opm now coming to the ideal opm so to understand the practical opm firstly let be clear let it be clear that uh, what are the desired characteristics of any opm to understand it firstly uh, we should understand that uh, for ideal opm what should be the different parameters the first one is open loop gain for ideal opm the open loop gain it should be infinite for ideal opm for ideal opm the input resistance it should be infinite for ideal opm the output resistance is zero for ideal opm and width is infinite 
fifth one is for ideal open the common mode rejection ratio that is called CMRR it is infinite and uh, slew rate of ideal open is infinite there are other parameters also but these six are the main parameters while studying the open so I have already discussed about uh, the open loop gain of open right so for ideal op it is infinite but for 741 ic it is approximately 107 dv similarly for ideal op the input resistance is infinite it is desirable and but for 741 ic it is uh, approximately 2 mega ohms similarly for ideal op r out should be zero since op is a voltage amplifier so r out is zero right if r out is zero for ideal op -amp. for practical op -amp, for example 741 ic uh, it is in ohms it is in ohms it is less than 100 ohms approximately 75 ohms right bandwidth of ideal op -amp is infinite if bandwidth is infinite means it can amplify from very low frequency signal to very high frequency signal but for practical op -amp, the bandwidth is limited so for 741 ic the unity gain frequency that is also called gain bandwidth product for 741 IC, it is 1 megahertz. Similarly, CMRR is infinite for ideal op -amp. For 741 IC, it is uh, around uh, 80 dB. And uh, for ideal op -amp, slew rate is infinite. But for practical op -amp, there are various practical op -amps available in the market. There are various op -amp ICs available in the market. In this class, we are focusing on 741 IC, right? So, for 741 IC, the slew rate is 0 0.63 volt per microsecond so obviously the input resistance is infinite output resistance is zero it should be it should be there uh, in order to avoid the signal loss and for any op amp it is desirable that the bandwidth cmrr and slew rate should be high bandwidth cmrr and slew rate should be high but for 741 ic i have already mentioned the numerical values fine so, we can say that uh, there is some limitations of 741 IC, although it is very popular IC, it is widely used. And one of the app, uh, limitation of 741 IC is its slew rate is very limited. Ideally, we are saying that uh, the slew rate is infinite, but for 741 IC, it is less than 1 volt per microsecond. It is only 0 0.63 volt per microsecond. I hope you understand the meaning of uh, CMRR and uh, slew rate. You have studied it uh, in analog circuit. Like slew rate is the maximum rate of change of output voltage with respect to time. And CMRR, that is common mode rejection ratio, it uh, describes the capability of the circuit to reject the noise. Fine. Now, coming to the pin diagram of 741 IC. 741 IC is a 8 pin uh, IC. So, in the labs, uh, you have performed various uh, experiment based on 741 IC. Let us quickly review the pin diagram of uh, 741 IC. It is a 8 pin IC. See, pin number 8 is NC, not connected. It is not used. I have already described the schematic symbol of uh, 741 IC. And uh, in that, you have seen that it is having two input terminals. So, inverting input is at pin 2 and uh, non-inverting input is at pin 3 and uh, output is taken from pin number 6 and uh, this 741 IC it requires uh, two supplies plus minus VCC minus VCC is connected at uh, pin number 4 and plus VCC at pin number 7 and pin number 1 and 5 these pins are for offset null offset null so this offset uh, voltage it appears since op amp is a different amplifier so it means that uh, if we short the inverting and non inverting terminal no inverting and non inverting input terminal and if we connect it to the ground terminal right so what should be the output voltage Output voltage should be 0. It should be 0 because both the input terminals are connected to ground. But practically what happens, output voltage is not 0. There is some voltage in millivolt appears at the output. In order to make that output voltage to 
null to zero, we intentionally apply some voltage at the input terminals that is called offset voltage. So, in order to nullify this offset, pin number 1 and 5 of 741 IC is used. Now, see, there are various op -M ICs are available in the market, but we are focusing on 741 IC, it is one of the most popular IC in fact. So, there are some reasons behind it. There are various advantages of 741 IC. The first advantage of 741 IC is short circuit protection circuitry. It is having internally short circuit protection circuitry. circuitry. It means that if the output is shorted to one of the supplies, so it means that the output is shorted to supply, it means that the uh, a large current will flow and it can damage the 741 IC. So, there is a short circuit protection circuitry inside the 741 IC to protect the 741 IC from damage. And the another advantage of 741 IC is internally compensated IC. See, like uh, I have already mentioned that op -M is a multi-stage amplifier, right? It may be two stages, it may be three stages. As far as 741 IC is concerned, it is a three-stage amplifier. So, when we go for two stage, three stage, four stage amplifier means multi stage. So, what happens that the stability of the amplifier is compromised. The amplifier becomes unstable because of comparable poles and zeros that exist in the amplifier. So, in order to stabilize that uh, amplifier, that IC, we need frequency compensation technique. Frequency compensation uh, technique is a technique uh, which is used to stabilize the multi-stage amplifier, to stabilize the 741 IC, to stabilize the amplifier, right. One of the popular frequency compensation technique is Miller compensation. So, in Miller compensation, we connect a capacitor, right, we connect a capacitor, that is a different topic, frequency compensation is a different topic. What I am trying to uh, describe here is that, that capacitor, that that is the Miller comp uh, compensation capacitor, Miller compensation, it is internally connected to the 741 IC. That is why 741 IC is called internally compensated IC, means already frequency compensation, Miller compensation is applied inside the 741 IC. We need not to connect any capacitor externally. That is one of the advantage. Another advantage is high input resistance. Input resistance is for 741 IC, it is approximately 2 mega ohms. High voltage gain, obviously, it is having high voltage gain since it is a multi stage amplifier. And as I have already mentioned, that it is having offset null capability because there are two pins, so pin number 1 and 5, it is used for offset null capability. So, these are the few advantages of 741 IC, that is why 741 IC is very much used. Now, coming to the internal circuit of 741 IC. So, the internal circuit of 741 IC, it consists of uh, around 24 transistors Q1 to Q24 and uh, it is having 11 resistors, 11 resistors R1 to R11 and uh, one capacitor of the value 30 picofarad. So, I am going to describe the internal circuit of 741 IC. Now, starting from the leftmost side, see, firstly, a reference current, I reference is generated. So, you can see that to generate this I reference current, uh, three components are used. One is Q12 transistor, another one is Q11 and one resistor R5 of 39 kilo ohm. So, this is the leftmost branch and this leftmost branch, basically it is generating a reference current, I reference. You can uh, calculate the value of I reference, uh, different collector current values, that is a different topic. In fact, that is called DC analysis of 741IC. So, before doing uh, DC analysis and AC analysis of 741IC, firstly, you need to understand the circuitry of 741IC, right. Now, see. The transistors Q11 and Q10, this one, Q11 and Q10 along with the resistor R4 of value 5 kilo ohm, it forms a current source. If you remember, 
uh, this is the Widler current source that uh, you had studied in analog circuits, Widler current source. And Q12 and Q11 transistors are diode connected transistors. You can see that the base and collector terminal are shorted. That's why it is called diode connected. Now, another current mirror is formed by the transistors Q8 and Q9. You can see that it is a basic current mirror, right? And the input stage, it is formed by the transistors Q1 to Q7. Q1 to Q7 are Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4, Q5, Q6, Q7. These seven transistors, it forms the input stage. That is the first stage of 741 IC. And this Q1, Q2 transistors are in differential configuration. It is a differential amplifier. Now, you can see that this Q1 and Q2 are in common collector configuration. Input is applied at the base terminal. Output is taken from the emitter terminal. So, it is in emitter follower configuration, emitter follower that is also called common collector configuration. So, the reason is that the input transistors are in uh, common collector configuration because it offers high input resistance that is one advantage. Another advantage of using common collector is it avoids the loading effect also, right. And uh, this Q3 and Q4 transistors. Q3 and Q4 transistors, it forms the common base configuration. You can see that input is applied at the emitter, output is taken from the collector. Q3 and Q4 are in common base configuration. And the basically this Q3 and Q4, it forms a level shifter circuit, which uh, shifts the DC level. And another use of Q3 and Q4 transistors are, it, uh, it is used to protect the input transistors Q1 and Q2 against the emitter base junction breakdown. So, Q3, Q4 transistors are in common base. Firstly, it acts as a level shifter circuit and the secondly, it uh, protects the input transistors Q1 and Q2. And Q5, Q6, Q7 transistors along with these three resistors R1, R3, R2, it forms the load circuit, load circuit of the input stage. And the purpose of this load circuit is to convert the differential input into single ended output. You can see that it is having uh, differential input, it is a differential amplifier and the output of the first stage that is taken from the collector of Q6, it is single ended output, it is single ended output. So, the load circuit of the input stage that is formed by the transistors Q5, Q6, Q7, it converts the differential input into single ended output. Basically, this Q5, Q6, Q7 transistors along with the resistors R1, R2, R3, it is based on base current compensated current mirror. That again you had studied in analog circuits in the diff current mirror topics, different types of current mirror. So, you have seen that uh, there are three current mirrors used. One is Widler current uh, source that is formed by transistors Q10, Q11. Another one is basic current mirror that is Q8, Q9. And the third one is based on base current compensated current mirror. Fine. And uh, this is the description of the input stage. Now, coming to the second stage. Coming to the second stage. Now, see the output of the first stage is taken from the collector of Q6 transistor. I have mentioned this dot. This is the output of the first stage and input of the second stage. And the output of the first stage is it is connected to the input of the second stage. See, the second stage, it consists of transistors Q16, Q17 and Q13B. Along with these three transistors, there are two resistors R9, R8 and one capacitor of the value 30 picofarad that is, uh, that is used for frequency compensation. Now, see again. This Q16 transistor, it is again in common collector configuration, that is emitter follower. You can see that the input is applied at the base terminal and the output is taken from the emitter terminal. So, Q16 is in common collector configuration. Again, the question, why the input transistor of the second stage is in common collector configuration? The reason is, firstly, the common collector configuration, it offers high input resistance and also 
इट मिनिमाइजेज द लोडिंग इफेक्ट फाइन नाउ क्यू सेवेंटीन ट्रांजिस्टर it is in common emitter configuration you can check the input is applied at the base the output is taken from the collector of the q17 so q17 is in common emitter configuration and q13b transistor it acts as a current source and it provides the bias current to q17 transistor see this q13a q13b you can see that it looks different from other transistors fine so you can see that it is having two collector actually uh, this q13 q13b 13a 13b are non standard uh, transistors right uh, for standard transistor means for all other transistors the reverse saturation current is 10 to the power minus 14 ampere but for q13a it is uh, 0.25 into 10 to the power minus 14 ampere and for q13b the reverse saturation current is 0.75 into 10 to the power minus 14 ampere right so you can uh, consider this q13 a 13b transistor as uh, like uh, the base and emitter junction of both the transistor are in parallel fine so q13b it comes in second stage it uh, acts as a current source for uh, q17 transistor and you can see that uh, this cc of value 30 picofarad this cc is the compensation capacitor it is connected in between the output of the second stage and the input of the second stage output of the second stage and input of the second stage this frequency compensation is basically miller compensation and the function of this 30 picofarad capacitor is to stabilize this 741 ic that's why this 741 ic is called internally compensated ic because this capacitor compensation capacitor is fabricated inside 741 IC right so this is about second stage the second stage it provides uh, a lot of gain to 741 IC now the output of the second stage it is taken from the collector of Q17 transistor and the output of the second stage it goes to the input of the third stage or we can say this third stage is the output stage this one is the output stage and the output of the second stage it goes to the input of the output stage and you can see that this q23 transistor that uh, belongs to the output stage again this q23 transistor is in common collector configuration see the input is applied at the base terminal of q23 and the output is taken from the emitter of q23 again the uh, use of common collector configuration at the input transistor of uh, output stage is same high input resistance and loading effect to avoid the loading effect fine now see this q13 a transistor now focus on q13 a q13 b it comes in second stage now this q13 a transistor it provides the bias current to the output stage it provides a bias current to the output stage and the output stage transistors are q14 and q20 you can see that this q14 is npn transistor q20 is a pnp transistor and this uh, q14 and q20 it forms the class ab output stage if you remember you had studied power amplifiers in uh, analog circuits class a class b class ab class c right so the advantage of class ab power amplifier is uh, there is no crossover distortion fine so in output stage of 741 ic class ab configuration is used that is formed by the transistors q14 and q20 and as far as q18 and q19 transistors are concerned along with this register r10 basically it is it has been used for dc biasing the output stage to bias the output transistors output transistors th uh, these output transistors are q14 and q20 q14 and q20 fine now the output stays consist of transistors q13a q19 q18 q14 and q14 and q20 fine now apart from these transistors there are uh, few more transistors here you can see 
and uh, these few more transistors are Q15. I am just uh, putting down the circle Q15, Q21, Q24, and Q22. Four transistors. I have circled four transistors Q15, Q21, Q24, Q22. Along with these four transistors, R6 register, R7 register, R11 register. So, these four transistors and these three registers which I have circled here, it forms the short circuit protection circuitry of 741IC that I have already mentioned that, that one of the advantage of 741IC is it is having inbuilt short circuit protection circuitry and this is short circuit protection circuitry. Normally, these transistors are off. These transistors only conduct when the output is shorted to one of the power supplies. In that case, a heavy current flows. So, in that case, this short circuit protection circuitry comes into action and it protects the output of the 741 IC. The short circuit uh, current for 741 IC is 25 milli ampere. It means that uh, it can protect 741 IC if the short circuit current is up to 25 milli ampere. Right? So, I have described uh, about uh, all the stages, all the transistors here in 741 IC. So, I am just summarizing it. You can see that uh, there are three stages in 741 IC. The first stage is a differential amplifier and the second stage you can uh, see that uh, it is a common emitter amplifier and the third stage is class AB output stage. Basically, it is a voltage buffer stage. The third stage that is the output stage is a voltage buffer stage. Means, the voltage gain is approximately 1 for the output stage. That you will calculate in further classes. You will see that uh, uh, by doing the small signal analysis that is AC analysis, you can calculate the voltage gain of individual stages of the 741 IC. Right? We are interested in calculating the voltage gain of individual stages because once we know the voltage gain of the first stage that is the input stage, voltage gain of the second stage uh, that is common emitter amplifier and the voltage gain of the third stage that is the output stage. So, we can calculate the overall gain of the 741 IC. The overall gain of this 741 IC, it will be the multiplication of the voltage gain of the individual stages. And for 741 IC, it comes uh, around approximately 107 dB, 107 dB, that is the part of AC analysis. So, when you will perform the DC analysis of this 741 IC, in that uh, you will perform the DC analysis of first stage, DC analysis of second stage, DC analysis of output stage. In DC analysis, you will calculate the collector currents of all the transistors. In AC analysis, in a small signal analysis, you will calculate the input resistance, output resistance, transconductance of individual stages. And after that, after that, uh, you will calculate the overall voltage gain for this 741 uh, IC. And uh, also, you will calculate uh, in unit 1 uh, further a few more parameters. Uh, one parameter is slew rate. As I have already mentioned, uh, the slew rate for 741 IC is uh, 0.63 volt per microsecond. You will derive it. And also, you will derive the gain bandwidth product. That gain bandwidth product is also called unity gain frequency for 741 IC. It is uh, around 1 megahertz. So, these derivations you will do in unit 1 of integrated circuit. So, in this class, I have uh, described, I have discussed uh, the basics of operational amplifier, advantages of op amp, characteristics of ideal op amp, advantages of 741 IC, and the pin description of 741IC and uh, lastly, I have given the description of the internal circuit of 741IC. So, as I have already mentioned, you have seen that uh, this is internally compensated IC. The reason being that this compensation capacitor of 30 picofarad is connected inside 741IC just to stabilize this 741IC. This is the reference. Thank you.